Hello, Benito here. I want to talk to you about three keys to persevering in church planting. Church planting, as you know, is one of the most difficult, challenging, rewarding, exhilarating things you've ever done. And if you've church planted, you know, for every Stephen Furtick, there's the rest of us, right? I mean, everybody starts off thinking that, hey, I'm going to go out and I'm going to speak at Catalyst. But after a year, you wonder, you wonder, will I even be able to afford going to Catalyst? You know, you, man, you're so poor, you can't even afford the R in it, and, and you wonder, Lord. What happened to the ideal call of God and all these things you placed in my heart to the current reality of the disappointment that you're living in? And one of the things that I learned through this in the midst of the challenges and the struggles are three things that I help, that, that I hope will help you in a persevering. First thing I've learned is that you need to commit yourself to prayer. This is a, there's a story in Luke chapter two about a widow by the name of Anna. And the Bible says that she was a widow for 60 years. And you know, she had these grandiose plans too. I can imagine her life where she wanted to go out and, and have the perfect family and had this entire dream of what life would look like. But all of a sudden things didn't go as expected. And let me tell you, in church planting, things are not going to go like you're expecting. So what do you do in those moments? You know what Anna did? The Bible says that she devoted herself to fasting and praying day and night. And if there's one thing that I would challenge you is commit yourself to prayer. Over the years, I have under I have overestimated Benito Frescas and I've underestimated God. Tim Keller says this, that a lack of prayer is linked to two things, pride and unbelief. And I my, the, the reason we don't pray is because we think we can do things on our own and we don't need God or we don't believe that God can move. But when we pray, what we are saying is, God, I need you. And what I've learned over the years in church planting is when I say, God, I can't do it, then God steps in and he does what we could never do. So I believe the key for you persevering and breaking to that breakthrough is quit trusting yourself and, wa and start watching God. There was a moment in year five where I was listening to podcast. I was going to conference. We kept hitting this lid. We just couldn't go over it. And, and I just felt God tell me, Benito, tell me when you're done. Tell me when you're done striving. Tell me when you're done working. Tell me when you're done doing everything that you could do. Because when you're done, then I can step in. So first thing I would say, commit yourself to prayer. The second thing I would say is don't give up. There's going to be moments and challenges and struggles and battles that you're going to face. People are going to leave. You're going to be betrayed. Here's the rule of thumb. If it happened to Jesus, it's going to happen to you. You are going to go through incredible times of financial challenges, relational challenges, man, organizational challenges, leadership challenges. In those moments, you are going to be faced with a decision. Will I quit? Going back to the story of Anna, as I think of Anna after 60 years, can you imagine fasting and praying for 60 years? But one day she got up and she didn't quit. And little did she know that one day that she got up, everything was different because there was a little couple that went in there by the name of Mary and Joseph and they were brought to present a little baby named Jesus to the temple. And the Bible they said, the Bible says that Simeon, who was the man, the priest at that time was dedicating Jesus to the Lord. And the Bible says this, at that very moment, Anna walked in and saw Jesus. What if she would have given up that day? What if she would have stayed in bed? What if she would have just gone through the motions? But the Bible says she committed herself to praying and fasting and she saw Jesus. Here's the third thing I want to let you know. Man, commit yourself to prayer and fasting. Don't give up and remember this principle. God acts slowly before he moves suddenly. A breakthrough is on your way. Let me tell you what happened when we began to fast and pray and seek God. We were as a piece of property that we were praying for for eight years. We had a challenge for uh, just getting space. It, with the city that we're in, everybody's moving to it. It's astronomically high just to rent. We couldn't get into the schools because a satanic group tried to get into it. It was just a challenge. It was a battle for eight years. But let me tell you what happened. A couple months ago, as we were praying and fasting and committing ourselves to prayer, not giving up, God performed a miracle. And now we have 11 acres of land right in the prime real estate in the city where we've been praying for eight years in the middle of Round Rock, Texas, a suburb of Austin. And it is an only God moment. I feel like God said, Benito, when you're done, I can step in. You know, he waited until the fourth day to raise up Lazarus because the Jews thought that the fourth day, the spirit left the body. 
He waited till Sarah was 90 years old to give her a son. And let me tell you, God waits to the last moment so he can receive the glory. So my encouragement to you is commit yourself to prayer. Trust God. Don't give up. And remember that God moves slowly before he acts suddenly.